It's just like when you look at medical history in the past, you don't own your body. And so a lot of these surgeons get hold of these bodies to dissect. Mm. Um, and they're digging them up from from graveyards. There were body snatchers. They called themselves resurrection men. And they would go into these cemeteries and they would dig up these bodies. And they would oftentimes strip the body naked because it was, it was illegal to steal possessions from the corpse, but not the body itself. What? Because there was, no, I, there was no concept of the body being sort of property. So they would throw the clothes back into the grave. And, and they were really clever in the ways they did it. They usually sent a woman in the daytime to, to masquerade as a mourner. And she would kind of go through the graveyard and she would see where the fresh graves were because, of course, you'd want the body to be as fresh as possible. And then at nighttime, they would go in there and they would dig up these bodies. And they could take as many as 12 bodies in a night. It was like hard labor. And it was very lucrative. Um, because the only legal bodies to dissect in Britain um, in the early 19th century were bodies of executed criminals, of people who had um, murdered other people. So specifically so if you murders. went to the like to say goodbye to your Nana and drop some flowers on her grave and there's just a big hole in the ground. Well, they would cover it up. But um, you do get these stories of uh, people finding out that a body. So, for instance, I think it was in 1785. Um, this person goes to this graveyard and discovers that a body is missing, that a body has um, been snatched. And everybody in the village goes to this graveyard and digs up their relatives and, and drags these coffins back to their home until they could make the cemetery safer. Oh, my God. Which is insane because people were really really feared this. And um, so yesterday on Twitter, I put up a picture of something called a cemetery gun. So they had these devices that they would put at the foot of the grave and it um, had like a trip wire. And so you could set up the gun to shoot anybody. Oh my would. God. And there's, there's actually a really awful story of a grieving father who they, this was set up at the grave and he accidentally trips it and he gets shot. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't exactly a safe way to, to protect the bodies, but they also had that. watchmen. Look at there that. There it is. That's from your uh, <laughs> That's Instagram from or your Twitter feed. That's Twitter. Yeah, everybody oh went nuts God. on that yesterday. Cemetery gun. 19th century used to protect against body <laughs> snatchers. That is so crazy. It's a musket. Yeah, it was hardcore. I mean, you'd have to be quite wealthy as well to to set something like that up at the at the foot of your relative's grave. They also used mm. coffin collars. So that was sort of a, like an iron. Um, well, it was it was a collar, and they would nail it to the bottom of the coffin. So that way, so what what a body snatcher would typically do is just open the foot of the grave. You wouldn't dig up the whole grave. He'd smash open the lid, and he'd have instruments to kind of drag the body out. Well, if the corpse is nailed to the bottom of the coffin, you're going to have a lot of trouble <laughs> dragging that body out. So people, you know, they did all kinds of things. They put these cages over the over the graves um, to protect them, so people. Uh, the internet, uh, God bless it, uh, will say to protect against vampire or to, to keep vampires from coming. It had nothing to do with that or zombies. Mm. It was to um, prevent body snatchers from getting a hold of those corpses. But, you know, those bodies. Look at this. Yeah, there they are. Mort safes, they were called. Oh, my God. And you'll see them a lot <laughs> in Britain. Um and there, they were people were very paranoid about this. I mean, you can find a lot of exa examples of this. And bodies were stolen a lot. And thank God they were on some level, right? Because think about how much we learned from these bodies. Bodies were needed to be dissected to teach medical students. Yeah. And um, one of the scenes in the book, I talk about the dead house. They called it the dead house. And everybody had a different experience in the dead house. There's probably people listening who've, who've been in a dissection room and you have a really – a uh, vivid memory of that. It's probably bright and white and clinical. Well, these places, the bodies would have been bloated and partly decomposed. Uh, dissecting bodies was dangerous because you could cut yourself and you could infect yourself with bacteria. They weren't wearing gloves. Um, and so you get uh, examples of people cutting themselves and dying within 48 hours. So going into medicine was dangerous. And um, there's a story in this book about uh, a guy who goes into the, the dead house for the first time and he freaks out and he sees all these like mice and rats and things like that eating the bodies. <laughs> and, oh. and so he jumps out the window and he, and he runs off. But later he becomes accustomed to it as we all become accustomed to horrible things at some point. And he actually starts taking pieces of the corpse and throwing it to the poor little starving creatures that are oh. in the dead house. And Jesus. yeah, so his kind of like, you know, that, that horror that we all experience possibly when we, when we're confronted with death to accepting it as you have to, as a medical student, if you want to go on. 
Um, so the dead house is, is particularly, it would have smelled, um, dissection would have, would have been a winter sport because the bodies wouldn't decompose as quickly. You of course wouldn't want to be dissecting in the heat of the summer. Right. Um, and so did they literally have seasons for dissecting? Yeah, they would, they would tend to teach students in the winter. So and did they colder. wear like winter jackets and do yeah, it they, in a well, cold? They would have probably cause well, they had a fireplace at the end of the room as well. It would make it really mm. stuffy and smelly. Right. And you couldn't really predict what a person had died from as well. So remember, people are dying from things like smallpox, which is awful. Yeah. Um, and this is before mass vaccinations. This is certainly before antibiotics. And so a lot of doctors or medical students die as a result of going into the profession. 